So for me to be working right there with Taker and Vince McMahon, you know, and everything, I mean, it don't get no better than that. What was he like back then? You know, as a young guy in the late 80s, early 90s, what was he like? Completely different guy? Well, no, he was the same guy. He's always been one of the nicest guys in this business, okay? He's always tried to help people. Uh, I've watched him come back to TVs and stuff, and before he, you know, has to go out and do whatever he has to do, he'll come out during the day doing rehearsals, and he'll just, on his own, just step in and try to help guys. Nobody asked him to do anything. He'll just do stuff on his own, and I could always go to him if I had problems with other people. You know, he would always kind of watch my back, and not only me, he would just look out for everybody. So Taker was one of the nicest guys in this business and i have a lot of respect for him did you ever foresee him being the you know one of the biggest stars of all time is that impossible to say well no that's not impossible to say because i was with him the day that he left wcw him and i both was in the office with jim hurd jim hurd was running the company at that time and uh, I was in there complaining about I had some problems with uh, with with Flair, and then I Taker would had problems with Ole Anderson. So Ole Anderson didn't want to pay Taker a certain amount of money, is what I gather. You know, I mean, this has been quite a long time. And so Taker told him no, and he left, and Taker went straight on up to WWE. So you know, just I was right there through it all. Is it true that? So. Oh, sure, Kevin. Oh, go ahead. no, go ahead, John. I'll follow you. I was going to say, is it true? Only that day told him you're never going to make any money in the business. He told him he would never draw a dime. He, he he had red hair and freckles or something. He said to him, but he told him he would never draw a dime. That's how wow. smart. In my opinion, and everybody has one. Nobody has drawn the money that the Undertaker has for this length of time. Anytime he goes out, he draws. And <clears throat> I don't know anybody else you can say that about. Hogan had a down period. Uh, the only other one that comes to my mind, the only other two is maybe Rock and Austin. But I think Austin had a little bit of a down time when they turned him with McMahon. That was so ridiculous. You know what I mean? That was one of the hot, that was the hottest angle of all time, McMahon and, and, and Austin. But the Undertaker, he's like the ever ready battery rabbit. He just goes and goes and goes. And there's no telling how long he could come two times a year and draw money because every time now, it's it, to me, what I equate is it's like <clears throat> you're going to watch uh, Mickey Mantle's last game. You know, you don't know if that's going to be the last time you'll see him and people are going to pay to see him. And all he needs is a little angle and he, his mystique is over so much. And for not being able to see that, how tall is he, Teddy? 6'5", six, 6'6"? Six, six? Uh, yeah, I would say somewhere like that. You know, you can't teach height. You know what I mean? You can't teach physical presence. And I'm not going to, this is an holy bashing, but hey, we all make mistakes, but that was, had to come back to haunt only, I mean, because well, we're not going to draw. I, well, Kevin, I, I have this, I'll, I'll say this to you. I don't, I don't think he didn't come back to haunt only. Only didn't give a shit about nobody. So I don't think he really <laughs> did. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but. Can you be any more like that wrong, though? I mean, obviously, he was so completely wrong. It's ridiculous. He didn't, I guarantee, that didn't bother him one bit. Ole didn't care about, no, he didn't, Ole didn't, I don't know whether he liked himself. He didn't like nobody. So I that I don't even think that bothered him at one, one bit. That's Kevin, a great you... comment. Teddy. Teddy made a great comment. Did Ole even like himself? I don't know. You're right, Teddy. You're right. I mean. <laughs> He was yeah. the hottest guy. He didn't like, he didn't like anybody. He, he And a lot of people, you know, a lot of people thought, you know, him and Flair were really tight. But I come to find out, you know, in, in the long run that he that he didn't even like Flair. Yeah. Yeah. And Flair's the yeah. one got him his job. I know. I know. Crazy. Crazy. Kevin, was he hard to work with as far as booking and stuff? Oh, he's just so arrogant and so negative i remember i had this is thousands of years ago 
I had just won a body, three bodybuilding contests, and I came on TV and squatted 425 pounds 26 times. Now, here's a legitimate contest, I won, and I won a powerlifting contest. Oli says, I was ripped. I had like 3% body fat. Oli says, you look too skinny. No one, I can't have guys losing to you. Thinking, whoa, so... Maybe I should gain 50 pounds and be fat, you know. He just never complimented anybody. The only guy I ever saw him compliment anybody, Stan Hansen. He, he loves Stan Hansen. Other than that, no. I mean, you know, he Tommy Rich drew money. Well, he was okay, but I was the one that paid him. No, Tommy made himself. There's another guy that people don't know the history of. Tommy Rich, when we went to Ohio, Michigan, when uh, uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling took over that area, it was like Tommy was uh, Mick Jagger. People were throwing the hotel room keys in the ring. Girls were throwing their underwear in the ring at Tommy. I mean, he was over. And Ole said, well, I built him. No, you didn't, Ole. You gave him the spot, and he made it work. Like Teddy. We gave Teddy the spot, and he made it work. There's plenty of guys. We wouldn't be talking to Teddy today if he didn't uh, take care of the his job that he was given. And over-exceed. You know, so all he's saying, well, this guy, Tommy Rich, never drew. You know, this is ridiculous. And he, you know, the great match, the uh, precursor to Hell in the Cell was the Battle of Atlanta with Buzz and Tommy, and they turned people away. And Oli said, "Well, it wasn't that good of a match." What are you shit me? I mean, it was, if somebody had a video of that, they could probably sell it for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, you know, you know, and then Oli was so negative, John. I don't know how, you know. Blackjack Mulligan knocked him out three times in three weeks in a row. Yeah. And, I mean, you think you'd learn not to screw with a guy that knocked you out with one punch the first week, but it took only three weeks to learn. He just didn't know how to shut his mouth. Right, Teddy? Right. Well, he, not only that, he just, like I said, he was just a negative person, man. He just hated everybody. And he threw the N-word around just like it was your name. I mean, he if, if he even knew your name, he wouldn't even call you by your name. He'd call you the N-word. That's how he was. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. And click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.